Talking about flex fuel vehicles FFVs now what are these if we are using ethanol up to 10% in the petrol then we do not require any flex fuel technology but beyond that this technology has to be used the highest growth of flex fuel vehicles has been registered in Brazil over the past few years because of higher production of the crops through which uh, ethanol can be obtained now the most important thing with the flex fuel vehicles is this technology came long before with the model t as you can see here and this model was by henry ford and this was driven on alcohol and since then we have seen that the technology started to uh, evolve in brazil this technology has been used since 1920s and countries like uh, sweden france germany are some of the other nations which are now using flex fuel technology in this technology the fuel tank would have the option for petrol diesel and ethanol and then whatever fuel you choose would be utilized to run the vehicle through the sensors which we would understand in a while the most important thing is of the total worldwide consumption we say brazil is one of the leading nations which uses flex fuel vehicles followed by united states canada and sweden so these four are the leading nations in terms of the number of vehicles sold which are based on flex fuel technologies in united states it's mainly in the california where methanol flex fuel blending has been successfully done now if we look onto the structure of the flex fuel vehicle here we have the fuel filler neck and through which the fuel pump uh, assembly which has the uh, fuel tanks and these tanks are made of a special material so as to minimize the emissions from ethanol now there would be fuel uh, rails and fuel lines which would run and they are designed to handle the increased volume in order to compensate for ethanol's lower energy density then there are fuel sensors which would detect what fuel is there in the vehicle and this fuel has to be utilized so if there is petrol it would run on petrol if it is ethanol it would run on ethanol the engine calibration updates are done and this basically helps to understand the the uh, best method of fueling and then there are insulated wiring and material which are used now there are two types of blending which are done one is inline blending uh, blending and other is splash blending what is the difference under splash blending the ethanol is directly put in the tanker so it is directly put in the tanker or the delivery truck however in an inline blending what happens is ethanol is metered into petrol which runs in to pipelines and therefore these two techniques are different in india if we talk about flex fuel vehicles what are the problems associated to it the first is the affordable price the scarcity at which we can get ethanol at an affordable price the next is as of now we are net importers of ethanol there are multiple uh, taxes which are levied on denatured ethanol and this complicates the interstate movement so movement from one state to another becomes difficult there are non standardized blending methodologies which exist and non compatible handling methods and uh, there are issues even with the distribution system so how ethanol would be uh, brought and distributed ethanol has lower energy content than petrol and thus ethanol uh, blended vehicles have lower calorific value consumers therefore need bigger size of fuel tanks in order to have ethanol as one of the fuels and to make it one of the uh, flex vehicles so bigger amount bigger size of fuel tanks would be required uh, the first development started in 1990s and then in 1994 ford taurus brought uh, numerous vehicles and then by 2017 we have seen numerous vehicles on road through uh, which are flex vehicles now what are the advantages firstly is the environmental impact ethanol burns much more clearly it has very few toxic fumes and therefore is considered as anti pollutant so uh, 
uh, ethanol is basically one of the major advantage then the burning facilities uh, the greatest advantage is it is designed to burn whatever proportion of mixture composition is there so if it is more of ethanol less of petrol more of petrol less of ethanol whatsoever is the electronic sensor automatically uh, basically gauge the blend and therefore the fuel ingestion is based on that the next is it is a very good alternative to fuel uh, to oil which is a limited resource and is non-renewable there are tax benefits which are given in numerous nations to promote ethanol and flex vehicles as one of the technologies also it can be sustainably produced because it is uh, it, it uses ethanol which can be you uh, obtained from uh, renewable sources like plant and therefore is much more advantageous and it has better improved performances but there are definite disadvantages associated for it for example sole use of ethanol can be uh, problematic because for which you would require huge number of crops that have to be planted and this could lead to higher price surge of the crop now when the price of the crops would increase the price of the ethanol fuel would again increase and this would make the people shift from ethanol to petroleum again the next is engine design sometimes the design is so manufactured that uh, this ethanol causes corrosion with the system and therefore damages the internal part of the car or the vehicle the next is it is an expensive technology it is a scarce resource to use with and typically uh, you get around 15 to 25 27 percent fewer uh, kilometers per liter as compared to e85 uh, uh, as compared to normal fuel so with the blended fuel e85 or e100 you get uh, 15 to 27 percent less kilometers per liter of the fuel used and therefore this is one of the major disadvantage now if we talk about the case studies across the globe uh, we compare brazil sweden and united states the type of the flexi fuels in brazil is e22 e100 however in sweden and america it is e85 that is 85 percent of the blending in brazil it is mainly through sugarcane however in us it is corn or maize which is the predominant source for ethanol manufacturing the total vehicles are exceptionally high in brazil around 36 million in contrast to us which is 20 million the share of the flex fuel vehicles is 22 percent exceptionally higher than the other two nations again the uh, refueling stations for ethanol are very high in brazil and re, uh, ethanol refueling station as percentage of the total is around 100 percent and therefore it is a successful um, way which is used in brazil in india we have talked about in next six to eight months all the vehicles would be uh, flex fuel vehicles under the euro 6 emission guidelines and so far we have asked for affidavit by the supreme court to allow engines with euro 4 emissions the next is uh, in countries like france there is a strong uh, tax reduction up to 50 percent in countries like ireland bio fuel is manufactured from whey which is commonly grown there and in sweden we have blending up to 85 percent which is good because this helps the vehicle in the cold season and uh, so e75 in um, uh, e75 is used in sweden rather than e85 which is better for winter months and therefore this is one of the standardized methods which is used now in brazil also motorcycles have been released which are based on uh, the same technology and the same principle so those were about some of the important informations on the flex fuel vehicles one of the upcoming technologies which would require renewable sources it would be local for vocal because we are uh, giving a higher thrust to manufacturing uh, of the flex fuel vehicles and this would require higher ethanol production as well so increasing agricultural production along with uh, development and uh, manufacturing sector would be one of the outlooks that has to be taken into account but definitely increasing the production of ethanol is one of the major concerns before we dive into the flex fuel vehicles so this was about the newer technologies and the newer initiatives we would be covering many further interesting lectures stay tuned good luck